before getting into water one should know how deep it is likewise when we are studying a particular act we need to know how exactly it is structured once we understand the structure we get a right perception to study any law law of evidence or the evidence act 1872 is not just about 11 chapters and 167 sections we need to understand how exactly it is structured to understand how exactly we need to approach the subject hey guys welcome to my legal classes this is ganesh pujari and in this session i am going to give two different perception to understand how exactly the evidence act is structured both the perceptions are going to help you guys to understand how exactly you need to approach the law of evidence or the indian evidence act 1872 why to waste time let's get into the first slide as i have already told the indian evidence act 1872 has 11 chapters and 167 sections in those 11 chapters we can divide these 11 chapters into three different parts and in the first part we are studying relevancy of facts in the part 2 we are understanding how the relevant facts are to be proved and in the part 3 who must produce evidence and the manner in which evidence to be produced so in the first part we are understanding relevancy of facts in the second part how relevant facts are to be proved and then part 3 discusses about who must produce and what is the manner in which evidence to be produced this is how we can understand the indian evidence act now let us try understand what is part 1 part 2 and part 3 if you ask me to simplify it further in part 1 and 2 we are discussing about the facts whereas in part 3 we are discussing about the evidence now what happens in part 1 and 2 in part 1 we are understanding the relevancy of facts whereas in part 2 we are understanding how such relevant facts are to be proved now one is about relevancy of facts and in second part we are understanding how such relevant facts are proved whereas in part 3 we are understanding about the evidence first part is who must produce the evidence in part 3 and then in the same part we are also understanding how or in what manner the evidence to be produced that is what we are learning under part 3 so from chapter 1 to chapter 6 we are understanding all about facts including relevancy of facts and how the relevant facts are to be proved whereas in part 3 starting from chapter 7 to 11 we are understanding about the evidence that is who must produce evidence and in what manner in which the evidence to be produced in the first part we have two chapters that is chapter 1 and 2 and the chapter 1 deals with the preliminary aspects whereas the second chapter deals with the relevancy of the facts that is what we are understanding in the part 1 in part 2 we are covering as many as four chapters starting from chapter 3 4 5 and 6 with these four chapters we are understanding how the relevant facts are to be proved now chapter 3 deals with facts which need not to be proved and chapter 4 deals with oral evidence whereas chapter 5 deals with documentary evidence and finally chapter 6 deals with circumstances when documentary evidence has been given preference over the oral evidence in these chapters we are understanding how the relevant facts are to be proved finally in part 3 we are understanding who must produce evidence and the manner in which evidence to be produced to understand this we have as many as five chapters that is chapter 7 8 9 10 and 11 chapter 7 deals with burden of proof chapter 8 talks about estoppel chapter 9 on witness chapter 10 on examination of witness and finally chapter 11 talks about improper admission and rejection of evidence this is how we are understanding part 1 part 2 and part 3 and that way we can understand the whole of evidence act 
Now I am going to give another perception where I am giving the list of all the 11 chapters along with section details. This is a simple chart where you will understand all the 11 chapters and how many sections are covered in each. Chapter 1 is on preliminary aspects covering from section 1 to 4. Then we have chapter 2 which covers the relevancy of facts starting from section 5 to 55 which is one of the lengthiest chapter in this particular act. Then comes chapter 3 which discusses on facts which need not to be proved covering from section 56 to 58 and we have two sections on oral evidence discussed in chapter 4 starting from section 59 and section 60. Chapter 5 is on documentary evidence covering from section 61 to section 90A. Chapter 6 is on the exclusion of oral by documentary evidence covering from section 91 to 100. Chapter 7 discusses on the burden of proof covering from section 101 to 114A. Chapter 8 is on estoppel covering three sections that is section 115, 116 and 117. Chapter 9 is all about witness covering from section 118 to 134. Chapter 10 is on the examination of witness covering from section 135 to 166 which is a quite lengthy lecture. And then we have last chapter with just one section that is section 167 in chapter 11 covering the improper admission and rejection of evidence. That's all. But I can't say that's all. We need to study all of these 11 chapters, 167 sections. Most of them are applicable for both civil cases and criminal cases. And then there are certain sections which are only applicable for civil cases. There are certain amount of sections which are applicable only for the criminal cases. I think I have updated on them when I was discussing about the nature of evidence act and in my future discussions of course I am going to cover them. Till then thank you so much for subscribing my channel. Please like share and comment my videos. All the very best for whatsoever purpose you are referring my channel and thanks again.